Hello and welcome. Gliders, like powered aircraft, have to maintain lift in order to stay airborne. Lift is generated when air moves across the wings and gliders achieve this by descending through the air. Any glider flight would be short if it was merely just a descent from height. The magic is to fly the glider into ascending air, which is rising faster than the rate at which the glider is falling. Glider pilots seek rising air in thermal currents or rising air above terrain or from a weather phenomenon such as the morning glory in North Queensland. Thermal currents occur during hot days, so pilots using these can't fly at night. The morning glory is relatively short-lived, although it covers hundreds of kilometres. However, air mass pushing over rising ground is continuous. Most glider pilots operate below 10,000 feet, otherwise they will require supplemental oxygen. There are, however, glider pilots who achieve heights normally only flown by military and civil jets. The legendary Steve Fawcett and co-pilot Ina Alvaldson flew a glider into the stratosphere on August 29, 2006, setting an absolute altitude record for gliders of 50,720 feet. Since the cockpit was unpressurised, the pilots wore full pressure suits. Fawcett and Ed Voltson had made previous attempts in three countries over a period of five years before finally succeeding with this record flight. This endeavour was known as the Perlan Project. As of February 2001, the world record for absolute altitude is 22,657 metres or 74,334 feet, set by American James Payne in September 2018 in El Calafate in Argentina in an Airbus Perlan 2 glider. These high altitude flights are done in southern Argentina where the conditions are the best uh, in the world. The highest altitude that the U-2 spy plane flew was 73,737 feet. Stunning. At 70,000 feet, the atmospheric pressure is just 6% of that at sea level and temperatures are frigid. These heights are above the Armstrong limit. Above this, unprotected human blood will boil, so a pressure capsule is needed. No kidding. The Earth's atmosphere is comprised of layers based on temperature. Humans live in the troposphere. Above this is the stratosphere, which has a depth of between 33 to 65,000 feet, within which there is little convection and mixing. Here, the air is very dry, and because of this, few clouds are found. Polar stratospheric clouds are the exception, as they appear in the lower stratosphere near the poles in winter at altitudes of 15 to 25 kilometers high. It was Swedish pilot Ina Volsen who in 1992 conceived of a project to explore flight by gliders into the stratosphere. In 1999, Steve Fawcett heard that Evolson was trying to find funding and immediately asked to join the project. The United States Air Force, NASA and others provided help. In 2005, their sailplane was shipped to El Calafate, Argentina, a small town at 50 degrees south latitude. Five unsuccessful attempts were made in a three-week period in unfavourable weather conditions. On August 29, 2006, with favourable weather conditions, they set off, and after a four-hour climb, Evolson and Fawcett reached the record altitude of 50,671 feet, validating the concept. After Fawcett's untimely death in 2007, it appeared for a time that the mission was on permanent hiatus. A new team gradually reassembled around Evolson, and partial funding was secured thanks to commitments from partners in the United States and Morgan Sandercock, an experienced sailplane pilot from Australia. In 2010, Jim Payne, holder of numerous world soaring records, joined the project as chief pilot. A great deal of design work has been done by Greg Cole of Windward Performance to show that a sailplane for 90,000 feet is relatively straightforward, while 100,000 feet is possible. 
In 2014, Airbus agreed to become the title sponsor and provide sufficient funding for completion of the aircraft, flight testing and the altitude flights. The mission was renamed the Airbus Perland Mission 2. RDD Enterprises, an aviation research, design and development company based in Richmond, Oregon, took over the manufacture of the Perland 2, completing it in 2015. The 2018 season was again based at El Calafate. The project acquired a Grob G520 Egret turboprop aircraft for use as a tow plane. This enabled Perlin 2 to be towed to 44,000 feet. The Perlin 2 could fly to 90,000 feet if conditions allow, higher than the manned level flight altitude record of the SR-71 Blackbird at 85,069 feet. Viewers from around the world can watch the video from these flights when they are taking place using the link in the description. Standing mountain waves are a source of rising air used in the sport of soaring. Riding these waves, similar in some ways to surfing on an ocean wave, has been widely used to reach great altitudes in sailplanes since they were discovered by German glider pilots including Wolf Hirth in 1933. Standing waves normally do not extend above the tropopause at temperate latitudes. A strong west wind usually decreases above the tropopause, which has been shown to cap or prevent the upward propagation of standing mountain waves. At the outer boundary of the polar vortex, in winter, the stratospheric polar night jet exists. Its wind field can join with the wind field of the polar jet stream. The result is a wind which increases with altitude through the tropopause and upwards to 100,000 feet or above. When this conjunction of winds occurs over a barrier mountain, a standing mountain wave will propagate through the entire altitude range. These conditions are likely to occur in the southern region of Patagonia three to four times per year between mid-August and mid-October. They probably occur in New Zealand, but less frequently over the Antarctic Peninsula more frequently and at several locations in the Northern Hemisphere but closer to the North Pole at latitudes above 60 degrees north. The sampling of air and high altitude research continues furthering glider developments and weather prediction. Besides these glider flights there have been others in balloons to touch space. Felix Baumgartner set a record ascent to 128,097 feet in a Red Bull Stratus balloon and on another flight to 128,000 feet leapt out breaking the sound barrier as he fell in a 10 minute descent. Amazing. Thank you for watching.